Hi. Hi. Is everybody ready to get a bit angry? Yeah? Okay. Let's do this thing. Okay, so I'm here to tell you about urinary tract infection, which is an instant conversation killer anywhere, <laughs> but let's just go with it. So urinary tract infection, or UTI for short, is an infection of the urinary tract, typically the bladder, which is shown here on the left. And people think of UTI as a sort of pesky little infection. You maybe get it, and it's a bit irritating, and it makes you wee. And then you pop some antibiotics, and everything is fine. But that is so far from the truth. UTI is an incredibly serious disease, all jokes aside. 400 million people for, per year get a UTI. And Deaths associated with antimicrobial resistance of urinary tract infections, a quarter of a million people are already dying from UTIs that you can't treat with any known antibiotic because antibiotics, as we know, are becoming increasingly useless because the bacteria are evolving resistance. It's a huge problem. And the really big problem with UTI is it comes back. So you have a UTI, you take an antibiotic. If you're lucky, that works. But then a couple months later, you might get it again and again. And some women get them over and over for very long periods of time. It's miserable. And I say women. There are lots of people who get UTI who are not women. So some men can get it, children can get it. And as we get older, parity happens. And it almost equalizes uh, amongst women and men when they're elderly. So it's a huge problem uh, from all walks of life. And I just want to orient you on the anatomy. Of course, the bladder, we all know what the bladder is. We empty and fill it about six times a day. But it's a little known fact that the gut has a lot to do with uh, UTI as well. So here is, a, here is a lovely picture of a back passage. And you can see all of those green things are the good bacteria. We know about the good bacteria. You know, we have the yogurt. We know about them. But in amongst those are some bad guys. These are the red ones. And they're in there lurking, right? And usually they just stay there. But sometimes they decide to strike out along the desert. Uh, and in women, they can take a welcome break uh, uh, in the vagina. And in the vagina, interestingly, it's all, there are also a lot of good bugs. I, I assume you all know this. So there's lots of good bacteria in, in the vagina that are fighting off these bad bugs that are coming from the back passage. And usually they can fight them off. But if you have a hormonal imbalance or maybe you're on antibiotics, they are overcome. The red guys win. They travel on through the desert, <laughs> across the skin, to the, the opening of the urethra. And then up there, they can get into the bladder, and they can even go further into the kidneys, which is really a serious infection. So UTI is not just one infection in one place. It's, it's like a journey. And there's a, there's a gut-bladder axis and a vaginal axis as well. So it's very complicated. OK, and just to orient you on the microscopic anatomy, so we hear, here we have the, the bladder on the left, and I've did a little cutout here. You can see this is a cross-section of the bladder wall, which is just a layer of cells, which we call the urothelium. And the wee is up here. So the wee is flowing along and ends up in the toilet, hopefully. <laughs> uh, usually with women, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's OK. Um, and there's the bad bugs there. Uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. This is, a, this, <laughs> this is a feminist talk. I can't help myself. OK. Uh, the bad bugs are coming in through the opposite direction. And you know, they're attaching. And people used to think, oh, they just attach, they dock. They cause a bit of irritation. And then we eventually they get, they get destroyed by antibiotics. It's actually a lot more complicated. And luckily for you, I'm not going to take you through the slide, because you're not in my university class. You don't. This is too much information. I just showed this to you. <laughs> I wanted you to know how complicated the, the real situation is, but what I want to focus on now is one thing in this picture, which is this. And what you're looking at here is a bunch of red bacteria, bad bacteria, that have actually burrowed into the bladder wall. Are you feeling uncomfortable yet? They burrow in, and they take up residence inside your cells, hanging out with your genes. So like they're, they're right next to the nucleus where all your DNA is. They're in there. They're multiplying. They're getting bigger and bigger forming a very big blister, which, which is known in the field as a pod. <laughs> it's really called a pod. And that is a pro this is a problem I'm going to talk about now very quickly. So these are hidden reservoirs in the bladder wall. They're not in the wee, they're in the bladder, in, inside, deep inside. OK. And in my lab, we don't think that the mouse model is very good. It's not very, uh, mice are not men, <laughs> right? And we, we actually think that studying things in a human context is important. So we're growing little mini bladders in the lab. They're about the size of a 5P coin. They're made out of human cells, and we grow them in the lab. And after about three weeks, they make these lovely, thick, fluffy bladder walls. Sorry, and there they are, you can see. 
and this is one of them in action. And what you can see is when we sprinkle bacteria on the top in the we, we put we on these things and everything, it's great. When we sprinkle the bacteria on top, they actually go inside and they form these massive pods, which I've outlined in a white uh, dotted line. So we can recapitulate these pods in our little mini bladders. We can do lots of studies on them. But this illustrates a very important point about UTI. First of all, when you go to the doctor with a UTI, if you have pods, but you don't have free floating bacteria, when you get a urine specimen, when you get a, a urinary uh, sort of wee sample, a you know, technical term, it'll be crystal clear because all the bacteria is inside the bladder wall, not in the wee. So your doctor will say, no bugs, you're not sick, go home, you can't have antibiotics. That's one problem with the diagnosis. The second problem with the diagnosis is that if you've got these pods, then they're inside and the, the antibiotics actually can't get into the pods. The antibiotics cannot penetrate the bladder wall, which is armor-plated, right? It's a really tough barrier. So you take the drugs, but they don't work. So the pods cause two problems, a problem with diagnosis, false, basically false negatives, and a problem with treatment. So what happens to the pods? People always want to know. Well, the pods actually keep growing and growing and growing and distending out like a blister in your bladder. Are you feeling uncomfortable yet? And then eventually they burst open like alien. And here's a picture. <laughs> this is a picture from my lab. Caught in the act, these bacteria are bursting into the wee side of the bladder. And what do they do when they're out there? They say, oh, I'm going to find another cell. I'm going to dock there and I'm going to burrow in again. So the cycle can repeat because they've hidden out, they've regrouped, and then they get back out again. It's all very horrifying, actually. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I've described one bacterial phenomenon, one of dozens and dozens that these bacteria employ to subvert us, to make us sick, to get around our immune defenses. This is just one tiny thing in a huge arsenal. These bacteria are incredibly clever, and they have, and they, they're out to get us. Essentially. But the funny thing is about UTI, this has only recently been appreciated, this too much information thing I told you. Only in the last 20 years has, has science discovered all these interesting tricks pretty much, and none of this, hardly any of it, has filtered into the medical textbooks. And I know this because I teach medical students every year, and when I tell them about the pods, the exploding pods, and all the, the crazy things that happen, they look at me like, really? Does that really happen? We've just been taught that, you know, it's just a simple infection, you give it antibiotics, you know, that's the chap next chapter. You know, they don't even think that it's a big thing, and that's because the science is somehow not filtering down into the medical education, which I think is a real problem. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, because of this, we have... It's been almost 100 years exactly since Alexander Fleming, there he is, a handsome devil, um, <laughs> discovered antibiotics, and he was actually in this very room standing right here talking about it. Um, and 100 years since we discovered antibiotics, and we still don't have another therapy. Antibiotics don't work very well anymore. Why do we not have a new therapy after a century? What's, not, what's up with that? And then 70 years ago, Edward Cass sort of built on Fleming's culture method and basically came up with the current level of diagnostic, which is, you know, you grow, the grow, grow a bug on a plate, and it's not very accurate. It's been 70 years, and we still don't have a better diagnostic for UTI, and many UTIs are missed. Why is this? I think it's a problem because this is primarily a disease of women, and this is a quote from the New York Times uh, not long ago. We have a high cultural tolerance for women's suffering. It's not regarded as important, and a lot of women go to their doctor, and they say they're in terrible pain, and they've got a UCI, and they're told, oh, it's all in your head, or, you know, it'll settle, come back and see me in three months. There's a lot of that going on, and it makes me really angry. And you know, there's another interesting disparity, which is with the research. So men's problems are researched much more than women's problems, and there's a little stat in this Guardian article, I'm not sure you can read it, but essentially, erectile dysfunction, which is a very important problem. 19% 19, 19 of men experience erectile dysfunction. Now, Two-thirds uh, two of women experience reproductive health problems, but there's five times more research into erectile dysfunction than there is into women's health issues uh, around the gynecological things. So why is this? Why is all the money and the attention showered on men's disease? Probably because historically, doctors and scientists have been men. It's just a theory. <laughs> so this explains why you have a UTI, you have terrible symptoms. You know what a UTI is because you've had 10 of them in the past year. The doctor does the test, the test is negative because the tests are terrible. He says, you're not sick. It's all in your head, go home, you can't have antibiotics. And if you are lucky enough to get antibiotics in this day and age, they, they might not work. So we're in this terrible situation, 400 million people every year, and this is the best that we have. I don't want to leave you with <laughs> doom and gloom. There is some hope, so there's coming up with new molecules, bug blockers. These are trying to prevent the bacteria from docking in the first place, because if they don't dock in that bladder wall, they can't get inside and perpetuate this infection. So there's some really interesting things coming down the pipeline there.
Probiotics. So, you know, these good bacteria that I showed you at the beginning, these are really powerful things. And if we can help bolster our own good bacteria, we might be able to help them fight off the bad bacteria with fewer side effects. And that's a really exciting space at the moment. And finally, I really want to big this up. This is a new vaccine. It's called uh, You're Immune. It's not approved yet in the UK, but it's being used um, sort of in specialist clinics, and they're going to roll it out soon. It prevents recurrent UTI in women who, who have no other hope of help. So this is a really exciting strategy. Vaccines, you know, if you can prevent it, it's much better than treating it. So I'm angry, and actually lots of people are angry now. Patients are finally starting. They've had enough, right? These women, mostly women, sorry, I know men do get UTI, but mostly women are very angry. They've mobilized, there's lots of support charities, I've listed a few of them here. Facebook has been a massive um, help because the patients are all mobilizing, they're educating each other. They're saying, when you go to your doctor, you know, don't take no for an answer. You know, be angry, and they're helping each other, and I think this is great. So we really need the patient voice, and this is true for all diseases. But there's three things, this is my final point, three things that are missing, I think, in the picture. First of all, we need a celebrity endorsement, like Mariella Frostrop, who's put menopause on the map. She started talking about menopause a couple of years ago, and now we've had policy changes because she's made a lot of noise. Menopause is very similar to UTI, it affects women, and it's sort of taboo, and you don't talk about it. You don't talk about your UTI. You don't go on about your UTI at parties. If you have one, you're ashamed. And this is wrong. And so we need somebody, we need our Mariella Frostrup moment in UTI. So if you know any celebs who get UTIs, let me know. Um, <laughs> we need the science, the great science that's being done. We need it to filter down into the education of doctors, because it's shocking what's not in the textbooks. And this stuff, you know, we spend a lot of money and a lot of time making important discoveries, and if it doesn't translate to medicine, what is the point? And finally, money. We need more research into UTI. UTI is very poorly studied. I think there's about 20 labs in the world that are really serious about it, compared with millions of labs for cancer. Uh, it's, it's, it's an important disease that deserves research funding, and nothing's going to change until we have better science. So get angry. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs>